Hello everyone. This is part 96 of our playlist, full step Python. Okay, so this is a training course. Okay, so this is a training course. In this training course, we are learning theory in depth as well as we are learning programming in depth. Right? We are learning theory in depth as well as we are learning programming in depth. Okay, so in this video, we will continue continue our thread classes okay and we also see the thread life cycle right so creating thread by inheriting thread class okay, so what we are doing we are creating custom thread by inheriting which class thread class okay so how we can inherit the thread class here is the syntax first we will write the class keyword then we will write the custom class name okay whatever class name you want to give that name you can write here then in the parenthesis we will write thread class okay threading dot thread right so this is how we can inherit the thread class and we will write the run method because when we start the thread okay so run method executes automatically okay in the run method we will write statements like statement one is statement two and so on user defined class inherit thread class user defined class means custom class whatever we are creating user defined class inherit thread class and override run method and override which method run method we can override run method of the thread class this run method is having operation performed by thread class right this run method having operation performed by thread class whenever thread is executed whenever thread is executed it execute run method okay so how thread execute it is start what run method the run method of thread class object right for example this is what this is our thread class in our thread class this is what a constructor or we can say magic method and these are the these are what arguments okay default arguments we have like group target args and keywords argument right and these are the statements and after that we have run method and self dot target and this is what this is custom class test thread we are inheriting from which class thread class itself and in this custom class means test thread class we are overriding which method run method okay. we are overriding run method we are creating what operation of thread okay here what we are doing we are creating thread class object and we are targeting particular function right and we created object and how we can start the thread we will write t1 dot start in order to start the thread okay so let's understand it by example we already have seen this example we write the code for this example so that you can easily understand so let me open id any okay so let me take a new file save it Okay, T6. Right. Here we will write the code. Okay, so first, what we will do? We'll import thread library. Import threading. Right. First, we import thread module. Right. Now, what we will do? Define a class for a thread that print even numbers. Right? So we will define a class for a thread that prints what even numbers. So let me write the class even thread. What is the class name? Even thread. This is a user defined class. Right? And this class 
will be inherited by the thread class. Threading is a module name and thread is what class name. Right? And here we will override one method which is run method. We are overriding which method? Run method. And here we will write the code. What okay. iterate over numbers 1 to 10. Now we can iterate. We will write for loop for num in range 1 to 21. So if you are writing 21, means it will execute till 20. Now we will check each number by if condition if sum modulus 2 equals to equals to 0. Right? Now print what? Print using f string. We will print even number. Here we will print the variable data. Right? You know, see here, define a class for a thread that print odd numbers. We will, we will write another class for odd numbers. Same, we will write here class. Then we will write the odd class name. Okay, or thread, and in the parenthesis, what we will write? We will write thread, which is a module name, dot class name thread. Okay, so what we are doing here? Inheriting, inheriting thread class by creating loop class. Here also, what we will do? Override the which method? Run method. Now what we will do? Same iterate what? Iterate over one to twenty. I it over 1 to 20. Same I will write here. Also for I will write here for now print in range 1 to 21 number modulus 2 not equals to not equals to 0. Okay, odd numbers cannot divide by 2 completely. So that's why I am writing this condition. Now modulus 2 not equals to 0. Right. And I have write if also. Now I will write here print. Print what? F string. We will print odd number. Now, right. After that, what we will do? We will create the objects. Creating objects or instance of the custom classes. Okay. Create what? Create instance or objects of the custom thread classes. Okay, so we have two custom thread class. One is even thread. And the second one is odd thread. In each class, we are overriding which method? Run method. Run method. Inside the run method, we are writing logic for even number, logic for odd numbers. Now we will. What we will do? So we will create the instance of both classes. First class name is even. Thread. Okay. First class name is even thread. So we will write object name is T1. Means thread one object and T2 goes to odd thread. Right. Now what we will do? Start the threads. 
which will run concurrently. So will run concurrently, and I will. How can I start the thread? Just I will write T1 start and uh, T2. T2 dot start. The moment I write T1 start start T2 dot start. So thread scheduler will execute which method? Run method and T2 run method. All right, but it will execute simultaneously. Both thread will execute it simultaneously. Okay, it is not like this. First it will print like complete even numbers. Then it will print. Odd number, it is not like this, it will print simultaneously, right? So, if I run this code, so it is not different. Okay, so, what is the class module name? Threading. See here. What it is printing? Even number. And after that, odd number. Then even number, then odd number. So, let me write another print. This print I am using for line changing. This print I am using what? Empty print, what it will do? It will, it will change the line. If I run the code, it will printing like this. Even number. For the odd number and then even number. odd number and even like this it is printing simultaneously odd even odd even like this right if i run again so it is executing okay so we will not call run method okay with the help of start method run method automatically called by, by the thread scheduler, okay. And first, PBM execute which thread? Main thread. Main thread. Every program have main thread, and these are the other threads. So first, main thread executed. Then this T1 and T2 thread will execute, right? Okay. Now we will discuss about. Thread life cycle, life cycle of thread, right? Okay, thread life cycle is divided into five stages. States okay, first one is newborn state, second one is runnable state, or we can say ready state, and the third one is running state, means here thread will execute. And then idle state. Okay, idle state means thread is not doing anything. Fifth one is dead state. Okay, thread is stopped. Right. For example, we have T1 thread. So what will happen? First, it is in newborn state. Right. Now what we what we will do? We will start. We will call start method. Okay. So T. T1 is what? Object of thread class. Right? T1 is object of thread class. Now T T T1 is what? T1 is in ready state or runnable state. Means T1 is ready for execute execution. T1 is completely exe ready for execution. For going in ex execution, thread is given to scheduler. From here, we will give thread to the scheduler, thread scheduler. Okay, and PVM schedule the thread. Okay, so thread will go here to here, then it will go here. See now, thread is what executing. Now, thread is executing means thread is running state. Okay, if somehow thread is interrupted using some external things, external resources, or something, if it is interrupted. So it will go in what state? Idle state. Okay. Okay. So after idle state, it will go back to the ready or runnable state. And again, it will go to the runnable running state. 
after running a state it will go to the dead state after running it will go to the dead state so this this is what life cycle life cycle of thread okay suppose we have alpha server alpha server means it will generate what alphabets so we will write like def alpha generator and here we are writing what for loop for num in range 65 is what 65 indicate what capital a ascii value is 65 65 to 91 we are iterating we are printing here okay so ascii code to character can be converted by the chr method so we are using what chr method and how many thread we have we have thread 1 thread 2 and thread 3 okay, so what what we are doing here we are importing which module trading module okay then we are inheriting which class thread class and we are creating custom class what is the class name alpha generator thread okay and we are writing run method and we are writing what a for loop okay and this is what care num num is what this variable right okay so with the help of super keyword with the help of super method we can call the parent class variables or methods right what is the parent class that is the parent class and we are calling what names name okay and here what we are creating object of which class alpha generator thread okay so we are creating thread one and we are creating thread two right so t1 we are passing name is what naresh we are passing name is naresh and t2 name we are passing passing what ramesh and we are starting t1 thread and we are starting what t2 thread so it will generate what it will generate what like it will generate alphabets it will generate alphabets like this okay so this port thread means t1 and t2 will execute simultaneously it is not like first t1 completely execute then t2 completely execute it will execute simultaneously right like this a b c and a d e like this so this is a server we have created for generating what alpha base you also try this code okay and try to understand the logic behind this course okay i'm attaching the i, I, I will attach the this documents in the description of this video you can practice and download it for the practice purpose all right so thank you everyone for giving your valuable time all right Thanks for giving your valuable time and always be happy. So always learn something, learn some technology, keep yourself updated, keep your knowledge updated always. Right? Bye everyone.